Hello and welcome to our bow keyring tutorial. In this short tutorial we're going to be showing you how to make one of these lovely bows on these D-rings that you can put on your keys. We're going to be working with leather so we'll show you some tips for how to work with leather but you're more than welcome to choose a different fabric, perhaps a cotton or a lightweight upholstery fabric. Start by collecting the supplies and materials you're going to need to create the bow keyring. We chose to work with leather and that's completely up to you whether you wish to work with leather or whether you wish to choose a different fabric, perhaps a cotton or an upholstery weight fabric. If you're working with a lightweight cotton, I would recommend interfacing your fabric so that you get the same structure that we've achieved here with the leather. If you choose to work with leather, you really can just grab some leather scraps, you don't need to buy a whole hide. And we chose to work with a pig suede. I would recommend working with something that's quite lightweight because you will find that it's difficult to actually turn around the bow as we create it if you choose something really thick and heavy. But you can obviously use real leather or you can use faux leather, it's up to you. You're going to need to get yourself a D-ring which is for the end of the keyring here. And the D-ring that we used measures one and a half inches which is four centimetres and that's the width of it there. You're going to need to get yourself a pair of scissors, a ruler, a pen that you can mark to draw out the size that you need. This is actually a pen specifically for leather and it actually draws a silver line so a silver or a gold sort of gel pen would be perfect for that or if you're working with other fabric chalk a removable pen, pencil, it's really up to you and maybe some pins, especially if you're working with a normal fabric. Obviously you don't want to pin the leather, but if you're working with a cotton, you're welcome to use those. And if you are working with a thick leather, you may find that you do need a leather needle for your machine. This lightweight leather that we used here is absolutely fine sewing with a normal machine needle, but you may need a leather needle for some of the heavier weight leathers. Start by cutting out two pieces of fabric. Now the larger piece has a measurement of seven inches in the width, which is 17 centimetres, three and a half inches in the height, which is nine centimetres. And this is for the main part of the bow. The smaller piece has a measurement of two inches in the width, which is five centimetres, and an inch and a half in the height, which is four centimetres. Now I'm going to let you cut these out. All you need to do is mark on the wrong side of your fabric using either what I use here, which is a, a silver gel pen, a leather pen, or you can work with a pencil or chalk, whatever you've got to hand, and simply cut those out with a pair of scissors. I simply drew the measurements onto the back of the fabric, but if you would rather draw them out onto a piece of paper and use that as a template, you're more than welcome to do so. One little thing that you need to think about if you are working with leather is that because leather, and this is for real leather only, has come from the skin of an animal, you're going to actually need to have a look and see that there are no marks or branding or anything onto the right side of the leather. You'll always work by drawing and cutting everything out on the wrong side, so I drew my area and cut everything out here. So just double check that where you've drawn your template, you're not, you don't have any markings or anything on the right side of your leather for that, because you can find that you might have a little bit of branding or a scar or something that you don't want, obviously, on your finished keyring. So I'm going to ask you to cut these out and then you can join me back here so that we can start working with them. Take both of your squares and you're going to position them right side facing up. We're going to fold them in half and we're going to be sewing along the long edge. Okay, so we're folding them in half so that the right sides are facing each other and we're folding the long edge to the other long edge and we're going to be stitching along the long edge. Now, we're working with leather, so we do not want to pin this, because if you put a pinhole in leather, it will stay there. You're welcome to just hold it like so, or if you would like to hold it together with something, I would recommend using a bulldog clip or a binder clip, just to hold everything ready to go. We're going to do exactly the same with the little rectangle. We're going to fold it in half, right sides together, again, long edge, 
to long edge. And we're going to take these to the sewing machine. So join me at the sewing machine with your fabric. Start by sewing the large rectangle along the long edge. We're going to be sewing one quarter of an inch, five millimeters away from the edge. And you want a back stitch to start. Now I am using a walking foot, which I do find works best if you're working with leather. It will help to pull the fabric or the leather through the sewing machine. But if you don't have one, then please don't worry. Another suggestion would potentially be a Teflon foot or to cover the base of your foot with some masking tape if you are having problems pulling your fabric through the machine. We're just sewing this with a standard straight stitch and a length of 25 millimeters. Now I am actually using a standard needle to sew this and I find you can get away with that with the lightweight leather. The needle size I'm working with is a 9014 but if you're working with a thicker leather you may need to try a larger standard needle or even a leather needle which has a wedge on the bottom of it and will help to cut through the leather. You may find that this does blunt your standard needles a little bit, so just check before sewing something else. And we're going to backstitch at the end here as well. If your machine struggles to backstitch, then you're welcome to just sew off and tie off your threads afterwards. Now you're going to complete exactly the same on the smaller rectangle, again sewing along the longest edge. One quarter of an inch, five millimeter seam allowance. Backstitch to start and then sew. And you can see I'm just holding the layers together. You don't get too much slip with the leather, so I haven't used any bulldog clips. Obviously, you won't be able to work with pins if you have chosen your leather. Um, if you're working with a cotton or something, then obviously you can use pins and take them out as you sew. And backstitch at the end. Trim off your threads, and now we're going to trim down the seam allowances to about 1 8 three millimeters. And just do this with a sharp pair of scissors all the way along the length. And you want to complete this for both the large rectangle and the small rectangle that you have sewn. Now I have trimmed the threads and I've trimmed the seam allowances down to one eighth, three millimeters on both the large and the small rectangle. I'm now working on turning the rectangles to the right side and that will hide the seam allowances and the sewing that we just did. Now this is a little bit tricky, especially on the small one here. With the leather you should find that it's possible, you'll just have to gradually pick and sort of pull it through with your fingernails. Um, but I promise that it is possible. With fabric this can be a little bit fiddlier, so I would maybe recommend investing in a loop turner because it will be possible, or it is possible should I say, with the loop turner. And that's what we use to turn around any of our fabric ones. And then it looks really, really nice. It's hidden the stitching and the seam allowances. So you're going to do that for the small one and for the big one, which will obviously be much easier. Join me back when you have done that. Once you've turned the large and the small rectangle around to the right side, be sure to position the seam in the center of one of the sides and do that for both the small and the large rectangle. You're then going to fold them in half, and you want to fold them in half so that the nice side is in on itself, and so that the seam is on the outside, okay? As you do this with the large rectangle, you need to feed the D-ring onto it, like so. And we're going to be sewing along the raw edges here in a second. The same goes for the small rectangle. You're going to fold this in half with the seam on the outside and you're going to be sewing along the same edge, the raw edges, at the sewing machine in a second. So join me at the sewing machine so we can sew these. Now you're going to be sewing on the sewing machine the raw edges here together. As we mentioned a second ago, the seam should be on the outside and ideally your seam allowances on the inside should be open and ideally they should be one on top of each other. So try and hold that in place with pins or bulldog clips if you can. Now we're going to start by ideally going backwards and forwards again. If this isn't possible on your sewing machine then please just sew and you can tie off the threads. 
and we're going to sew along this edge using the same one quarter of an inch five millimeter seam allowance. Now this is harder to go through the sewing machine. So again, a walking foot will help you here. Otherwise, as I mentioned before, a Teflon foot can be good or you can tape the bottom of your foot with some sellotape or masking tape. And again, backstitch at the end or tie off if your machine doesn't want to do so. Now we're going to do exactly the same for the small rectangle. Again, you've got the seam sitting on the outside. Ideally, that seam has been pressed open or is pushed open if you're working with leather. And again, they should ideally be one on top of each other on this side. We're stitching a quarter of an inch, five millimeters from the raw edge. You may find this much more difficult to go backwards and forwards with because it's so small on the sewing machine. So please then just stitch forward and tie off your threads afterwards. Once you've sewn both the large and the small rectangle, you're going to trim any threads and trim down the seam allowances again to one eighth, three millimeters away from the stitching line. If you're working with a cotton or fabric that you could iron, I would recommend ironing these seam allowances open on both the large and the small rectangle. You're then going to turn this around so that both of the seam allowances are on the inside, like so. And we can turn the D-ring around as well so that the curved edge of the D-ring is on the outside. The flat edge of the D-ring should be with the seam allowances on the inside. Now you also want to make sure that the seam allowance that we just sewed was in the, is in the center at the back side. You also need to turn the small rectangle around to the right side. And again, if you're working with cotton or something, I would have recommended pressing the seam allowance open, just like so. Once you have turned the small little rectangle to the right side, position the seam allowance so that it's at the center of the back of that piece. Now we're going to position the small center of the bow onto the main bow. You want to make sure that the D-ring is in the correct place and that your seam allowance is in the center of the back there. And the D-ring is nice with the flat edge in the bow, curved edge out. Now what we're going to do here is fold the end of this into a little concertina, just like so, so that you can get your smaller rectangle and fit that on. And again, this is a little bit fiddly. Just gradually keep pulling and pushing the small rectangle down over the large rectangle. It is tricky and you will need to use your fingernails and fingers to help it along. But I promise it is doable. And it does create a really nice finish because obviously we've been able to hide all of the seam allowances inside this. And you will start to see that it's coming together now. Ideally we want it to sit over the seam allowance on the back, which is here. We want it to sit over that, and you want this seam allowance of the small rectangle to be in the center of the back as well, so that they're almost out of view. Once you get there, you'll be able to start to actually play with everything, really puff up the other sides of the rectangle, and just fiddle with everything until you're really happy with the shape of the bow that you've created. And once you're happy with your finished bow and you've manipulated the fabric so that you're happy that the seam allowances are all hidden, bar the small seam allowance of the small rectangle at the centre of the back. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you've learned something new and hope to see you again soon.